05 Silverado just got here um, owner says it's been sitting for a year because last year did not pass emissions and he wants it to pass this year so um, I haven't even looked at it yet but he mentioned something about misfires and the check engine lights on uh, so just pulled it in right now to have a look at it I don't know if this thing has a clear flood mode but let's give it a go clutch in accelerator pedal all the way down all right so it sounds pretty good I don't hear um, nothing crazy or nothing that stands out sounds like all the cylinders are contributing so I'm not worried about that at this point I got the truck running and I could definitely feel a misfire and every once in a while you could even see the shifter shake pretty hard here's the codes that we have we have two of them sitting here we have a 430 catalyst efficiency bank 2 with there's which there's nothing I can do about that it's gonna have to go to a muffler shop or just somewhere else I don't deal with that type of stuff and then we have our p0300 misfire detected here goes our misfire counter you can see cylinders 1 and 2 specifically are the ones that are misfiring and that's why it feels really rough because we have two cylinders misfiring at the same time instead of just one okay so there goes our cylinder one misfire and now it's shaking pretty bad and for anyone who's wondering about that uh, catalyst efficiency code well whenever you drive around with misfires eventually it ends up destroying your catalytic converter so whenever you see misfires and people just don't care to fix it chances are the catalytic converter is already bad or it's on its way out uh, because the fuel isn't being burned uh, you know if it's a misfire due to like low compression or uh, no spark then the fuel isn't being burned and um, it's just making its way into the catalytic converter which is not good for it so anyway cylinders one and two is going to be uh, this first one right here and then the first one on the other bank i got the spark plugs out of one and two and just looking at them i don't see any cracks in the porcelain and the spark plugs themselves don't look that old i could smell fuel on the tips right here you can see they're even kind of wet yeah i don't think it's an issue with the spark plugs okay so instead of chasing the misfire through the ignition system i decided to let's start looking at fuel okay i want to check out the fuel injectors uh and the reason for that is because the ignition wires look relatively new the spark plugs look kind of new so someone's been in here throwing parts at the car right um so I'm not gonna worry about that for now. That's why I wanna look at the fuel injectors, all right? So I have two fuse jumpers right here, you can see, because this vehicle has two fuses for fuel injectors. Now, initially, I thought they separate them by like, say this first fuse is for bank one, and this one is for bank two, but that's not the case. It can't be wired up like that based off of the information that I got here. And the reason for that is, I'm gonna show you this information without the, engine running because it just makes way too much noise and just makes the video horrible all right so on this first fuse right here this is what i'm getting all right you can see we have a short hump two real high humps and then a short hump again and since it's a v6 and these fuel injectors are being separated by two different fuses we're just going to assume that each injector carries three i mean each fuse carries three injectors on it okay so we got one injector, two, three, and then one, two, three. I hope that makes sense. Now, there's something that stands out here to me, and it looks really weird, and I'm sure you guys can agree. So let's zoom in a little bit right here. Okay, so I even had to go in the house and get my scanner down or book just so I could reference things because it's this type of stuff. I don't do this every day, so it slips my mind, and I have to, you know, get a reference. So... See that hump right there you see how we have like that gradual upward slope comes across and then drops off here we have almost the same thing of course it's going to look a little bit different but we have a gradual up, upward slope and then drops off and that's a good current ramp okay for a fuel injector and here's what a shorted winding looks like on a fuel injector you can see it's more or less a straight upward shot comes across and then drops off now look at ours right here it's not straight upward there is a slight uh slope to it but we can all agree that is nowhere near gradual that's a straight straight up right so i think what's going on here is here goes our both both of our bad fuel injectors 
are on the same fuse it's not what i was thinking before where you know bank one or bank one and bank two that's not the case uh, because if i grab my current clamp and i put it on the other fuse right here here's what we have just like i said before we don't have any of those high humps and you can see all of these gradual upward slope comes across and then drops off very similar to what we have here upward slope drops off we don't have any of this going on on this first fuse this should probably be like injectors four five and six and on this fuse where we're seeing the bad waveforms we probably have injectors one two and three and that's where we're seeing both of the bad injectors on this one fuse so i hope that makes sense to you guys um but yeah here goes the data and I feel pretty confident on telling the owner what's wrong with this. But I just noticed that this car does not have traditional like exposed fuel injectors. I think they're actually inside of this whole piece right here. And I think it's called something like a spider injector system, like something like that. And this freaking camera won't focus and it's killing me. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be taking this apart to do this job. I just don't want to. And that's one of the perks of working for myself. I get to pick and choose the work I want to do. So I think I'm just going to be diagnosing this uh, car for the owner and then give it back to him. He can fix it himself what he wants. I don't care. But honestly, I just, I'm, I'm not even going to beat around the bush. I just don't want to do it. Okay. <laughs> you remember what I said about I'm not doing this job? Yeah, just forget all of that. <laughs> so that's a few days later. And here's where we are. As you can see, got the intake manifold pulled off of it. Here goes the old injectors. And I'm just gonna get ready to start taking this stuff out and uh, do a little bit of cleaning and put the new injectors in it. And here goes our prize. Look at that little booger. Go on, get, go. Now that I got the injectors out, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little bit of cleaning before I start putting everything back together. So that right there looks good enough to me. It's not perfect, but I think it'll definitely do. It better. So there we go. Got the fuel injectors in place, as you can see. And this was a real pain in the butt. I mean, uh, it just it's it's nerve wracking because all these lines face forward naturally, and these hard plastic tubes really don't want to bend. But yet you have to bend them to get them into each of the cylinders. And it's just like I said, nerve wracking because it, it just feels like you're gonna end up breaking or snapping one of these uh, plastic tubes where the gasoline goes through. And <laughs> it's not fun having to manipulate this thing to get it to work. <laughs> Definitely don't wanna break an expensive part like this. Next step is to get the old gaskets off of the intake manifold and the throttle body and replace it with the new gaskets and do a little bit of cleaning while we're in here. But uh, shouldn't be too bad. I'm just about done here. Everything is all buttoned up and put back together. I'm just gonna go ahead, prime the fuel pump right now and make sure we don't have any leaks. And then uh, we'll try our very first startup. on startup but remember we did use all that brake clean to clean everything out so it would start up extremely rich and it is running now all by itself just gonna let it uh warm up and let's go check things so it's now next day uh, i ran out of time yesterday and car's running and unfortunately did i make the wrong call this thing is still misfiring and when we look at the misfire data we still have misfires on cylinder one and two. Oh, that's not good. You know what that means, right? That means I just paid for those spider injectors out of my pocket. So, let's keep testing. Let's see what's going on here, if we can figure this out. So let's try to go back to basics, okay? Doing basic checks, things that I skipped over. So I tried switching spark plugs around and a misfire did not move. I tried switching ignition wires around, misfire did not move. So it's not the wires, it's not the spark plugs. We now know it's not the fuel injectors. But are we getting spark? 
to those two cylinders. Real basic test. I'm going to get the test light and let's see if we get spark coming to cylinder number, I don't know, I guess number one or number two, whichever one is easier to get to. So I did see a spark for cylinder number two, but to me it seemed kind of weak. If you start pulling back that uh, test light, it did not take much for it to stop arcing to the test light. And it would only, you know, jump the gap when you got really close with the test light. So let's test the ignition wire next to it, which is a known good because we don't have misfires on that one. Uh, let's see if the arcing looks the same or if it looks a little bit different, maybe a little bit stronger. Who knows? It's not going to like this. Now it's going to have three cylinders misfiring. So not only was that cylinder arcing a lot stronger, I could pull the test light completely out of that uh, distributor cap and it would still jump the gap. Not only that, but it, I know it's probably not going to pick up on camera because of the sound of the engine, but I could actually hear it popping every time it would make contact with the test light. It would just pop, pop, pop like a real strong um, arc. There was none of that coming to cylinder number two. So guys, what's going on here is we have an ignition problem. Well, you know what? I jumped the gun the first time, okay? Uh, on that spider injector. So at this point, I'm gonna take some of this stuff off and let's look at the cap and the rotor. As far as the rotor, this edge right here doesn't look too bad. You know, right here where it makes contact, I can see like a little bit of a divot, but that would really affect all of the cylinders. Um, looking at the actual capter, I've gone ahead and marked cylinders one and two with the little dots. So this is the lead for cylinder one, and there goes the lead for cylinder two. I mean, all of them have some carbon tracking on them, but one and two seem to have a lot. And you can even see right there on the casing behind number two, you could see all the burn marks. Another thing I noticed is this screw right here was very loose. Like when I started to unscrew it, it was already loose, so it wasn't even tightened down. Um, so if you turn this over, the leads for cylinders one and two is right here and right here. This is the screw that was loose. So if this distributor cap was sitting up a little bit higher like this because the, the screw wasn't bolting it all the way down, what do you think is going to happen to these two contact points when it tries to come in contact with the rotor right here? So it's just something I noticed. Based off of the look of this, I'm going to try a new cap and rotor on this thing. I'm already in this thing, you know, so we might as well try to actually get down to the real problem of what's going on here. And I know I'm not crazy because the spark that was coming out of number two was nowhere near as strong as the spark coming out of number four. I mean, I could pull my test light out like this far and it was still bridging the gap and you could hear a loud popping sound every time it would do it. That thing had a good spark coming out of it. This one, if you got this far, there was no longer a spark. It wasn't jumping that gap. And in fact, okay, so the contact is like back here. Even if I went halfway in, sometimes it still wouldn't jump the gap. I would have to get really close with the test light just for it to jump that gap and a spark to make its way through. And at that, there was never any uh, popping sound. It's just, it's a very weak spark. So what I want to do first is, let's try to clean these up. And I already did that. I just grabbed a steel wool, you know, cleaned up this face, cleaned up right here. And I try to clean up each of the posts uh, the best I can. You can see we don't have all that carbon buildup on them. It's not perfect, but it's actually hard to get inside of there. So I went ahead and cleaned up all the posts. Now I'm just going to go ahead and blow this out with some compressed air. We'll put it back on the car, see if it makes a difference. So I got everything put back together and I made sure that the cap was nice and snug. And cylinders one and two are still misfiring. a few days later we are back with a Chevy um, I got some new parts in from Rock Auto I picked up a uh, distributor cap a rotor and one ignition coil because this car only has one 
Uh, first what I want to try is the cap and the rotor. We'll go ahead and put them on the car, see if it made a difference. I'm suspecting the problem is right here. And this is just for good measure because uh, one on the car looks super old, rusty and crusty. So that's the reason why I ordered uh, this one. And the reason why I didn't just get this stuff from like AutoZone is because it was literally double the amount of price. So I got all this stuff for like $65 from Rock Auto, whereas AutoZone wanted like $120 or $130, something like that. Um, and all this stuff it's coming out of my pocket at this point. I'm going to be honest with you guys, okay? I made the wrong call on the spider injectors, and guess what? That's coming out of my pocket. I paid for that part now, not charging for any of the labor to install that. And guess what? If these don't fix the car, I'm not going to charge for any of this either. Everything is coming out of my pocket. You know why? Because it's my mistake. If I misdiagnose the car, there's no reason why the owner should have to pay for it. So... At this point, just got my fingers crossed that this is the problem right here. But we'll see. So any of you guys, you know, going to go ahead and hit that thumbs down button because I'm throwing parts at a car. Um, yeah, I see where I screwed up, okay? Um, I was quick to jump the gun on the spider injectors uh, without really doing my full testing and things like that. You know, had I saw that this thing had a weak spark on cylinders 1 and 2, I would have went a whole different direction. I would not never even mess with the spider injectors but i saw that waveform i saw two things that stand out and it just you know i just went down that rabbit hole I was like this has got to be wrong without checking anything else so anyway uh let's go ahead and put these two parts on it first let's see if it makes a difference old cap and rotor everything's buttoned up let's go ahead and start it up and say three hail marys it right up and I can already tell you it's running nice and smooth super smooth I don't feel any misfires at all it's crazy this is a massive difference guys this thing is fixed I I wasted my money on fuel injectors for misdiagnosing this car you saw after I found out that the fuel injectors didn't fix the car I started doing my basic tests and it did not take long for me to find out that cylinders 1 and 2 had a weak spark. You know, had I just, if this is, <laughs> don't go down that rabbit hole guys, just because you see something that you think isn't right, just keep doing your normal test. That's all, that's the best advice I could give you and you know what, I definitely learned a lesson right here. So the only thing this uh, customer is going to get charged for is the parts for the distributor. Uh, the, the rotor and uh, you know I'm debating whether it even needs that uh, coil maybe I should just put it on for good measure but really it doesn't need it this thing's running nice and smooth now he's definitely not gonna get charged for labor on the fuel injectors and he's not gonna get charged uh, the price of the part for the fuel injectors before we pull out the scope and look at the fuel injectors so let's just pull out the scanner once again and look at the misfire counter you can see the engine is running i got the rpm down there and look at that it's running absolutely perfect super smooth really nice just what i like to see that sucks um i did all that work and wasted money um, I don't even think I'm going to break even on this job uh, because of what the parts cost me for misdiagnosing it. There's plenty of shops and plenty of people that misdiagnose things all the time. And guess what? They make the owner foot the bill for it. And I'm not one of those people. I don't like doing that to people. It's not right. You know, I'm the one who screwed up, not the owner. So you guys just saw that on the first fuse jumper we pretty much had the same waveform for this fuse on the other one this is the waveform that we're getting and honestly it's pretty much the same waveform as before see because there goes our small hump and then large large small large large small so it's the same waveform the amplitude is just different it's it's more pronounced this time but it's still the same and the car is running perfectly fine so this is normal guess what guys it, it's a learning experience okay now i know when i see something like this on one of these trucks it doesn't necessarily mean something is bad 
because this truck is running absolutely fantastic now and that right is obviously normal so uh, just because you have two separate fuses I'm sure someone's gonna pour now someone who has more experience with this will be able to explain why one fuse is gonna get a different reading from the other fuse uh, but at any rate this thing is running perfectly fine I learned a valuable and expensive lesson on this truck but I'm not butthurt about it at in any way um, it was a good learning experience and I'm still gonna go ahead and put on that new ignition coil just so that the owner has a fresh start I mean we got the part here I'm not gonna send it back it probably costs you know half the amount of whatever the hell the coil costs to send it back so we might as well just put it on the customer's car and just make it that much more reliable for him so he had already installed new plugs new wires <laughs> now it has new spider injectors um, and now it has a new distributor cap and rotor and we're gonna slap the new ignition coil on it and this thing should be problem free uh, for a long time so the owner is gonna be really happy so changing this little coil isn't as straightforward as it may seem due to corrosion um, so on this side of the bracket would normally be sitting this heat sink and like this little module so you gotta make sure you remove that and everything is extremely rusty and I believe this thing had screws in here at one point but it it doesn't want to budge at all so I decided to use the die grinder and take the heads off of the back side and even this side or who knows it might have been a rivet I don't know but I ground off both sides and as you can see I'm just using a chisel and a hammer to pry the brackets away and get this ignition coil out of here it's definitely one of those jobs where like oh it'll be you know walking a park and it just turns out to be a freaking nightmare here goes our new ignition coil all bolted up and ready to go back on the car i sprayed uh the areas right there where i was grinding with the die grinder with some crc to protect the metal from corroding as you can see and the bolts got a little bit of thread locker just so they don't come loose with the vibrations of the engine so i'm just gonna go ahead and pop this on the engine and make sure that the car still runs good all right so one final startup new ignition coil is installed champ and it's still running nice and smooth no misfires and i've already gone ahead and cleared the check engine light so that's it for this one um i definitely learned something on this car right here so that's it for this one i definitely learned something on this truck um, and i hope you guys do if at very least i hope the video was entertaining to you guys so that's it for this one thanks for watching I'm out taking this truck for a test drive and before with the two cylinders misfiring uh, this truck was very difficult to drive uh, yes it is a stick shift and this thing needs brakes like crazy the rotors are completely rusted but uh, like I was saying it was almost impossible to drive this thing because the engine was just buckling so bad and it was just very difficult to drive especially being a stick shift but now it's it's nice and smooth. It accelerates real good. No hesitation at all. So I'm sure the owner is going to be really happy with this. I'm happy with it. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something from my mistakes. Um, if at very least, I hope the video was entertaining to you. But that's it for this one.